That's a lot better. All right, ready? This is Kill Bill. Oh, hi. Welcome. Welcome back to Game Devs Play Game. <laughs> Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, everybody. Cutscene. Let's do Cutscenes. Ginormous. We should take a drink every time there's a cutscene. Give me <laughs> so drunk. That would that would actually be a pretty uh a, that'd be a good drinking game. Oh no. Take a drink every time you hear calamity. Game. Uh, drunk devs play uh, games. Uh, <laughs> I like Take a shot every time you hear Seraph. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, Double well, shot every time you see feathers. I mean, so my question is, do you think that the cutscenes are bad? I mean, no. a lot of people like Here's, the cutscenes okay. and it's a story-based game, so they it's, have it, a context. It's a very story-based game and the cutscenes are sort of required because of just how the game plays. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of any game like this, yes, the cutscenes tend to just come one right after another, but it's setting the tone for the game. And, I mean, in a game like this, they can't just send you out and it's not Skyrim. Basically. Right, right. This is this is not a story where you're playing a nameless, faceless guy and you're making your own story. They have a story they want to tell, and sort of unfortunately, the best way to really convey all the the proper setting information, all that stuff, is to have these cutscenes. Well, and, it, and it, it rounds out the world and everything you're doing. I don't think it's necessary, but I think that it makes the game more engaging. Yeah. No, yes, yeah, so I think I think it's very important. It's just funny when you're recording it and you're like, oh, cutscene. This is gonna take up like a quarter of our show tab. Yeah, it does make it a little bit hard to have some interesting conversation. Yeah, fortunately, because... Fortunately, this playthrough is going to be long, right? So we kind of have full opportunity to say everything that we want to say about this game, plus some. Um, but yeah, it does break things up in an unfortunate way. And right. sometimes we talk over cutscenes because we need to talk about things. Right, there's thoughts going on. You know? Mm -hmm. the, the one criticism I do have to the cutscenes, which is somewhat minor... Is that there's a lot of like, they're they're slow. Um, yes. There's a lot of pauses and gaps and spans of time that basically seem unnecessary. And Jen, I think, has dubbed this the like the Asian silence, and it's literally a translation issue. When they localized the game and they they did the voiceover in English, the the cutscenes probably didn't time quite so well. Same way, right? And but they didn't cut the cutscenes down. Probably because it would have been too much work to make that worth it. Right. And I agree, I wouldn't have done that either. Um, but it, it, it kind of makes the cutscenes feel a lot longer than they need to be, or slower paced than they should right. be. Right, it, do, it, do, it does definitely, like, put you through it's like you're driving along, and then, oh man, bumps everywhere. Let's, we gotta go slow, guys. Interesting. She just did something, like, with her arms that I've seen in, like, a million anime and video games. She does this. Can't. And then goes right back to what she was doing. It's such a it, it, it's such an animation that's used in, I think, like Final Fantasy VIII had it. Like it's it's such a weird. Do you think it's like a pensive gesture? Yeah, like, like this is like a, like the, uh, the guy like stroking his beard like. Hmm, or well, like, it's not like oh this that's just a gesture showing that she's thinking like the other games. No, I mean literally the animation looks almost exactly the same. Like it's almost like a cultural thing to do this. Yeah, right. Well, and there, then go right back down. There actually are a lot of gestures in Japanese culture that mean a lot. I mean, that's this, this is the victory, victory sign. Yeah, I learned um, that today. Really? Yeah. Oh. I almost mentioned that on the show earlier, but I didn't get to, like, actually say the whole thing. No, but. they're living in the dungeon. I'm guessing that's not the end of this dungeon. That'd be crazy. We, we basically got the main point of the dungeon. It's it's both that so, orb where we learn that Saray has issues seeing. It, it's it's an orb of history, literally, like a recorded history in that orb. And for whatever reason, Saray has an issue seeing it. Um, and that has yet to be explained. But the other thing, the whole the other point of this dungeon is what we're about to do right now. Wait a minute. Doesn't that mean anyone who failed to become a shepherd could never get out of here? <laughs> Which, that's harsh. Indeed. It is a relic of a much wow. Era. It kind of sets the precedence, though, of what the history was like, and I think that's important. Yes. I, I haven't seen a lot of what the history prior to uh, the current state of the game is, um, but it, it does seem like... paint a little bit of it, I think that's where we're going to learn most of the truth about this world is through the history, um, because these orbs are a recurring theme, and, I mean, we they bring up the past a lot. Because we're in constant search for it, and and that's even why uh, 
Lila has, <coughs> she's not allowed to talk about the past with Saray, um, both because he needs to discover it for himself, right. A, and B, um, I mean, it would ruin the whole structure of the game. Yeah, right, no, exactly. Oh, hey. So now we can do this. Starfire. Bam. If I could hit the damn... There we go. Yeah, we lit a fire. We lit a fire up in the air. We did we that the fire. It was always burning. It's but burning. if you didn't catch, it's because Lila is a fire seraph. Right. Mm. Team kind of, you know... Yeah, wow. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh. I don't need to issue no commands. I got a Cujo on my side. Yeah, yeah, I'm running. I'm running. Oh, I have to. George out. Oh, yeah, because it's tutorial. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, oh we're back now to they're the all corner. basically in the same spot. We're fine. Be fire. Be fire. <laughs> it's a sneaky thunder! A pretty good comparison, actually. <laughs> right? It looks a lot like it, at least the Smash Bros. version. Have you ever played the Mother games? I'm not. No. Have you ever played Earthbound? No. no. Sadly. But why, <coughs> why did I ever decide to record it with you people? No. Oh, sorry. You said you liked <laughs> me. Earthbound is one of my favorite games. I would actually love to play that on the show at some point, but it's also a very... Long game? I guess it's not nearly as long as, as something like Tales of Zysteria, but it still is, any RPG is pretty long. Um, which is interesting, right? Like, I find it strange that that precedence has been set that RPGs have to be long. Yeah, right. We're, we're kind of breaking away from that with a lot of modern RPGs or a lot of indie RPGs, right? But like, right. I don't know. I, I mean, especially with JRPGs, I feel like there is an expectation... To right? be long, you you want a game like Final Fantasies. You want them to be long. Yeah, you know, this uh, Tales games. You want them to be long because there's usually a rich story behind it all, mm -hmm. and there's just so much you want to cram into it. Now there's other games where it's like maybe it's more about the characters and their interactions than it is about a whole world full of things. I think that's what they were striving for in Final Fantasy uh, 13. To the other side. I yeah. just think they did a bad job with it. Yeah. Shit's getting crazy. So, the other point of this dungeon is Lila's trying to teach how, how to be a proper shepherd. Um, and kind of, I don't know if you guys have caught this, but basically what's going on is um, he, he isn't, doesn't uh, have a lot of yet. the inherent ability that most shepherds do. At least not right away. Right. Um, and I don't know if that actually means anything. I don't know if they're just doing it for the purposes of like, oh, this is the order of tutorial stuff, and oh, this is just like the context of the situation, or if it actually is going to mean something later on. Right. Because, yeah, what if Saray is like not oh. a normal shepherd? Interesting. I didn't know that that was a thing. What? Are you what? So, right there, what I did was I hit the main attack button a couple times, I knocked him in the air, I hit the special move button, and it immediately, boom, hit him with something new. You, Yeah, you can combo with your, uh, what are they called, hidden arts? Mm. Or maybe yours are called seraphim arts. I bear my true name. <gasps> this is... Recite that name, harness the power that flows from it, and let it become your armor. That is the true power of the Shepherd. All right, I'll give it a try. Wait, Crimson Bridge! Death must be Elma! You just go Super Saiyan? You went Super Saiyan. That's pretty. Hey, feathers. <laughs> Big feathers. All those. This looks awesome. So this is basically our advantage in being, um, which uh, um, 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 being able to interact with Seraphim. What's the term? Resonance. Yeah, that's the point of having residence. Is that being the shepherd, we can armatize. <coughs> 
and merge. I'm guessing just the shepherd can do it. It'd be weird if, like... No. What? Other humans under the shepherd can also armatize. Now, I don't know if if there can be non-shepherds or non-like yeah, people under right. the shepherd that can armatize. That'd be really interesting. Um, and I, I kind of hope that that's the case, mm. right? I like how because then it, it means that there's something potentially on the other side of the spectrum that has a similar power that you potentially and, and, and so. not even just that, but also it means that the the rule of the seraph or the um the shepherd isn't necessarily the only answer. Yeah, right. What I like about oh sorry, go ahead. Well, that's what these games kind of like to do. They kind of like to flip the status quo on its head. Right. They're they're building this up to make us feel like the shepherd's the only way. It's, and then someone it's the else is going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So I, like, oh, I've done that for a long time. Like, fucking what? <laughs> I love the idea of have, playing as a really cool character and then finding out that there is a yang to your yin. Like mm-hmm. that, that is like more of a central drive for me in any one of these games than, actually, than the actual main plot. Like, I want to see that guy again. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, there it goes. So... Oh, there it goes again. Oh. All right, you can leave. Bye, Tony. Okay. I mean, get Gary. It's not like we'll ever have a third player. If you say so. No, I feel really like shafted here. Maybe in the next recording session you'll get. You know, to, uh... that's what you guys said last time. And every hey, man, time. I'm like. Tell you what, though. I'm like 18 hours into my playthrough. I don't remember this early stuff, man. Oh. Oh, we'll find out next time on Game Dev Play Games. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh. Dicks, 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 dicks,